Lightroom did an update recently. Do we still need Photoshop? Let's find out. Here we are in Lightroom and I have three pictures here and it is based on difficulty level. So one, I'm going to be trying to move the sticker from the bottom of the bottle. And two, I'm going to try to remove the statue. And three, I'm going to try to remove the groom from behind the bride and see what it does. All right, see how many tries it's going to take us to remove the groom. Okay, so let's go back to the first image here. And now we're going to go over here to this tab right here, the remove tool. And what you can see here is the remove tool. And you notice that how different it looks. And what you'll see here, you see early access, generative AI, object aware. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to test the old way just to see how it does the removing. Okay. So first, what we're going to do now is we're going to select and we are on the tool right here. You just scroll with your mouse. And all you're going to do is just kind of drag over the area like so. and see what happens. As you can see, the result is not pretty good. So we're gonna move on from test one, test number two, when I enlarge our brush. And all I'm gonna do is just kind of paint over and see what it does. Not that bad, but not that good either. All right, so let's move on to the groom now. And just, just do the same. not that good either so you can see that the old method doesn't necessarily do a good job so let me just reset each of them and let's go back now is we're going to try now to use the generative ai all right so we're going to click on the check marks to, to activate it and then what we do now is same principle we're just going to go and we're just going to paint And once we paint, it's going to select it for us, show the area that we have selected. And you'll notice that two things come up here, which it says the mask. You have your add and your subtract, which means that you can add more to the mask or you can subtract from the mask. So let's say I want to subtract. I click on subtract here, lower my brush size, and all I'm going to do is just paint out the excess of what I don't need. Just as an example. All right. And now all we're going to do now is just we're going to apply and see what it does. And that is a fantastic job. Just right off the bat, that is a fantastic job. If I just press my enter key on the keyboard so I can see what it looks like, that is a fantastic job, guys. They actually even mimic the, uh, the, gra the, the, the gradation of the colors. Pretty good, guys. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. All right, so what we're going to do now is going to go back to 100%. Let's go, sorry, let's go to... 60%. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go and go to the statue. All right. So same thing. So the two things we're going to do now is we're going to find out how, how, what's the purpose of objective aware. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and do a, a selection around the statue like so. And as you can see, when I made the selection, it only highlights the areas that I uh, painted over. So what we're going to do now is we're going to cancel this. And now we're going to select Object Aware. All right. And now I'm just going to increase my brush size a little bit. And I'm just going to go over the statue some more. And let it go. And as you can see, it highlighted the statue for us. So it knows exactly what we're trying to remove. And all we're going to do now is we're just going to click on apply. <laughs> and that is, that is fantastic. I mean, come on. And if you look to your right side over here, guys, you're going to see where it says variations. And you have uh, one of three uh, choices. So this is number one, number two. And number three so I'm gonna go with number three just for the sake of argument all right and then what we're gonna do now is we're gonna to go to number the, the third photo and this is a little bit more difficult because you have so many in the foreground the middle ground and not so much in the background but the mere fact that you have the groom holding the dress of the bride so let's see how well it's going to take care of that all right so what we're gonna do now we're just gonna go and just gonna paint And let it go 
the selection of the groom and let's see how many tries it's going to take if if any at all it's going to take to remove the groom and let's go go so you see it added someone else but let's go and see what are the other options and look at that look at that let's just press the enter key and take a look let's zoom in let's go to a 200 percent look at that guys you know, from where we, we're coming from to where we are now in Inside Lightroom, I think that's a fantastic job. I definitely could go and do more or try a different variation, but I mean, this has done a fantastic job, guys. So in the comment section below, guys, let me know what you guys think of this, the new feature inside um, Lightroom. Tell me whether or not you think Photoshop is gonna be needed anymore or do you think that we're still going to need Photoshop for a generative fill? I know that the generative fill feature inside Photoshop is a more aggressive and you also have more options. But for just doing edits inside Lightroom to, as a photographer, just to send to a client, do you necessarily now need Photoshop in order to do those things? Let me know in the comment section below, guys. I would love to hear what you guys think. And if you guys have enjoyed this uh quick look at the new feature in Lightroom, smash that like button, guys. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe and, you know, welcome to the family. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.